uh, the number's 252-228-5098. That's 252-228-5098. We want to hear your thoughts on uh, the early phases of the Carolina Panthers assembling their staff. The Super Bowl's coming up. Cody, why don't we go ahead and jump into a couple of cat calls? Let's do it. So what are your thoughts on catcalling? Yeah, it's pretty sh- You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. So how do you think catcalling makes the person feel? It feels good. Like a three and a four and a who's that cat sitting in the back corner with his face buried in his nose? Who's that kid that can use one? C3, what's up? No, I'm an o Panther fan here. Uh, great hire with Evero. I mean, I'm I'm being optimistic about it because he had a lot of head coaching opportunities and in interviews. So hopefully he sticks around for more than one year. Um, but it gives us a window where we can uh, operate and hopefully uh, achieve greatness in the South. Um, one other side note, I will say, I think. If Frank Reich is going to be calling the plays, then, I mean, wouldn't the quarterback's coach be? Oh, it cut out. Am, am I the only one not hearing him? I don't not hearing him anymore. But Tony stepped away from the computer for a second. So, whatever. It's just your boy talking. Um. Shout out to the caller. Appreciate you, man. Um, listen, I, I've said and been very vocal before. I would love to finally have a coach who is calling plays, a head coach who calls plays. Uh, and I I think that that's, uh, that's important. And that was one of the bigger reasons why we even hired uh, Frank Reich in the capacity that we did. Hey, Tony, the call shit out halfway through. Oh, sorry. I can't can't hear you. All right, I'm back. Uh, No, because I muted myself. That's why. But don't. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Well, that his call, it went on for, it says three minutes, but it turned out it was only 45 seconds. Here, let's go to Chuck. Hey guys, Chuck from Lizard City, aka Carolina Sports Guy. Yeah, sure. Uh, with everything going on like it is, and I know we're probably waiting on the Super Bowl to finish up so we can name our offensive coordinator, <clears throat> Brian Johnson. Uh, but anyway, I guess one of the questions I've got now that we've got a head coach and the defensive coordinator and the staff taking place, it really opens up the one thing that we definitely need. We know we got places, uh, pieces on defense and got a nice young offensive line. We need to build depth and, uh, got some nice pieces, receiver tight in here and there. You know, the running game don't look bad. The quarterback's a big question. Um, now if we sell the farm, try to move up in this draft to get, I say CJ Stroud. Cause oh, I, why'd you do this to us? Chuck? He's the one to get, uh, and, and not right young. Um, you know what? And I don't want Levis and uh, Richardson. I just I know if we stick at nine, but I, I think Stroud would be the one home run pick. If we did trade up, we got to give up some assets, and that's my question. I'm kind of torn because if we do that, if we go with our new defensive coordinator and he does a three four. We've got some nice pieces in place like Brian Burns, Jeremy Chin, you know, J.C. Horn, Frankie Lulu. But we've got in, in the ground, but we've got a couple people that like, you know, YGM that might not fill that void, might not be able to play that role. Um, so my question is, if we give up a lot to get this quarterback, are we going to have enough ammunition left to replace or rebuild what we do? need to on defense because if we keep these extra picks we might be able to hit some defensive gems to you know carry on what this defensive coordinator we got from denver what he might be able to do 
Uh, but then again, that puts you at risk of not really having that great quarterback. So that that's just the thing I want to pose. What, what do you think we guys do? Do we give up a lot to get Stroud, or um, do we stay put and see what happens and uh, try to roll with Corral or, or maybe a, a, a Derek Carr or some other option and uh, keep these draft picks and try to get some defensive players, maybe another receiver. It's just something I'm kicking around because we could go any way. We don't really know what our our, our brass or our, our people in the office plan on doing yet. And that, that's what makes this time of year interesting. So I can't wait for your comments, guys. This drives me nuts. Oh, pfft. Dude, you better get used to it, brother. This conversation is not going away until it's April. It's not the trade up problem. It's not that that drives me nuts. The uh, what drives me nuts is that we're potentially in a position where people are even considering trading up and doing all of this. Yeah. And in the background is the concern that our defense doesn't have enough depth. When all we've tried to do for the last two and a half years, three years, is is try to fix the defense. How is it not? All right, that's it. That's all I guess is like, well, you know, is that like if there was a time that you should be able to go out there and have these defensive players coming in and stepping into their own, uh, this would be a great opportunity. But names like I don't know, uh, YGM names like. Troy Pride Jr., names like, uh, I don't know, like we could go down the list of some of these defensive talents that we thought were going to be good and just kind of fizzled or aren't it. So that's it. That's what disappoints me. Well, look, now go to the trade talk. Well, look, man, you know, everybody knows I'm a Matt Corral fan, right? I would like to see what we have in Matt Corral. But I'm also a realist. And I know where there's smoke, there's fire. And the Panthers have chosen to not use a top 10 draft pick on a quarterback for the past, you know, three years in a row now when we've had an opportunity to do so. So with that said, I think that there's something to be said for just not prolonging the inevitable. And I've got to say, man, I kind of think that we might need to get used to the fact that the Panthers are probably going to be looking to trade up for a quarterback. Now, I went on Twitter today, and I put out a poll. If the Panthers traded up to number one, who should they draft? Not who will they draft, but who should they draft? And, Tony, it used to kind of be the consensus that Bryce Young was the number one guy in the quarterback class this year. But, man, with over 646 votes, C.J. Stroud with a whopping 70.7% of the vote. And, man, listen. It's Why do you think caused... it's changed so much? Well, you know what? He's a lot bigger than Bryce Young, probably by, like, five inches and about 30 pounds maybe. Um, five inches that's crazy <laughs> yeah i mean a yeah lot. i mean from, from yeah he's he, he's a bigger guy i yeah. think they're they're relatively the same type of mobile in that you're not going to use them to run primarily but i think they're every bit as mobile as say joe burrow is joe burrow is not a super mobile guy but he, he can move around when he is to. right right so in my mind cj stroud is more in that frame. And look, I'm not going to lie to you, man. CJ has one of the nicest touch passes that you're going to see on film from any of the quarterbacks this year. You know, and plus, if you remember, uh, his final game of the season, he came within three points of defeating the national champions. The yeah, Georgia like Bulldogs. if that goes a different way, they go. Yeah, to the he's probably he's unanimous. He's the consensus number one. number one at this point. Yeah, so a lot of people. I mean, C.J. Stroud is the name that's on the tip of Panthers fans' tongues right now, and um, I don't you gotta know. Got to go I've, to number one. I've kind of come. The around only way to one. get him is to go to number one. <sighs> it's you a cannot, so rich, though. You man. cannot uh, believe if you feel that way. 
that the other teams who are ahead of you in the draft are going to go, you know what? We just want to play the guy that's going to get us there, like be more consistent now. Let's go with the safer Bryce. You're not going to do that. They're going to pick. He's going to go number. He's going to be the first quarterback off the board. So then are you talking that we should trade up to number one? And say that. I'm saying that's what you have to do. We're going to have to give up a lot because let me tell you what. If the Colts decide that they want to move up, they're closer to number one than we are. Right. So There's like three gonna, teams that could move up that are and closer. This is, and Tony, this is what I've been arguing with people online. People are like, oh, it's not even going to cost that much. You're delusional. Lie. You yeah, are out if you don't if you don't think that this is three first cost round picks an arm and a leg for the Panthers to move up, you're delusional. I don't give a damn about what the Philadelphia Eagles gave to the Browns in 2016 when they drafted Carson Wentz. It will be far more than that. I am telling you. So there is no way, love, Cody, that it's less than this. Is that at the very minimum, it's this year's first, next year's first, and then a boatload of twos and threes kind of sprinkled in like this year's two next year's two and you know, whatever. I really truly think though, to move from nine, right? We're at nine to one where there's three other teams ahead of you that also want quarterbacks. You have to give the max and the max is three years ahead of time. You're giving this year's first next year's first and the following year's first. And Tony, now this is where I have the problem with the draft class, because whenever people hear me say that I don't want to trade up, you know, I, it's not that I wouldn't like a CJ Stroud or a Bryce Young, but when I say that they're not the type of prospect that a Trevor Lawrence or a Justin Fields were, that's what makes it all the hard that we're going to be having to give up this kind of draft capital. Why is he not a Justin up. Fields? I just don't think his he seems like he's just as good as Fields. How about except this? for I guess this the running part? He might. He's a better passer. That where he, he does he, seem he, to be a very good passer. I feel like Fields has better physical traits. Is there a any little, fear that he's from Ohio State? And I know you don't like those arguments, but there's never been a tell me a good Ohio State quarterback too. Well, I hear you. But at the same time, all I can do is look at the route concepts and the type of throws that they ask CJ Stroud to make. And they he makes good. and, and he makes some big time throws, and those receivers are running an NFL route tree. So but I'm not really too are... concerned about it. And by the way, then I'll let you go. Uh CJ Stroud has taken snaps under center. So it's not like not a lot. Um, though. Right, Every picture I see a man, from, he's in the shotgun. He's that but was, he's, that's a great he's not point. he's not coming from a pure uh from a pure like RPO uh, system. Yeah, yeah. He's he's not he's not running that type of offense. And one thing I do know about him, they give him a lot of control at the line of scrimmage to be able to adjust his protection, uh, uh you know, make changes at the line. The the dude can do it all from a mental standpoint. They have too don't... good of talent at the receiving core for him to just be a one read or and tuck it and run type player. That's not even his right. game. So you're right about that. Cody, is are we when it comes to the Stroud talk, is it a little recency bias though? Uh and what I, I mean by that is the last couple of games, right? Like that game against Georgia, right? Just fucking sinking into our head. But if you think back to the beginning of the college season, he was, I think they went and played, who was it? It was a game I was really, really excited to watch them play. And he was just whelming. It was like in these two big games. I don't know if it was the Michigan game or if it was, did they play Penn State? I can't remember if they played. I remember going, oh, this is a big matchup. We're going to watch this. This is the time Stroud is going to remind everybody that they've been sleeping on him because people told us two years ago Stroud is going to be the dude. People told us two years ago to not get last year's class with Pickett and them. That wasn't it. It's this year's class. So we were still waiting for it. And in the beginning, you know, you're like, oh, Stroud, his name kind of lagged through a lot of the season. 
he should be the number one prospect. Like he should have, he was kind of coming into the year, was he not? Who the yeah, hell was I mean, yeah, man, well, like no, his, him and him and Bryce Young were the names. Everybody knew that those two dudes were going to be pretty highly considered in this year's draft class. Um, and it, it's not how about this? It, it's not like Georgia was the only really good game that he played this year. Every game you watch, you will find clips of CJ throwing these beautiful downfield passes with touch over the middle. The dude has the arm and he has the mind right. for it. Um, but, you know, something else to consider, he had Marvin Harrison Jr., the best wide receiver in college football. That's who I want. That's Jackson cool. Jackson Smith and Jengba, uh, who was another really good type of uh, uh, receiver. And Ryan Day, the play caller in their offense, he is just very good at scheming guys open. But at the end of the day, Tony, your quarterback can only do what they're asked to do. And they didn't ask him to run very much. And that's he's why not that's super fast, dude. I no, watched, he's not. I, he's watched not. Him and I was like, uh, I was expecting him to be like, oh, you're the guy taking over for Justin Fields. Like, uh, you're going to I bet you he runs. I like, nope. I bet you he runs like a four. Mac Jones. Like, a like four, Mac Jones. Four, four, eight. Maybe a four seven. Oh, yeah, God, he's not. He's terrible. not. He's not really going to run away from you. But one of the reasons, telling you why people hype on that Georgia performance, is because it answered a lot of questions that people were wondering about him. How does he deal with pressure? Because pressure was a problem for him on film. It, it, you know, he doesn't really uh, run away from pressure that great. Sometimes he kind of he kind of drifts into the pressure rather than navigating the pocket and, and getting away from it. Whereas when he played Georgia, he played the best college defense that there is to be played, and he was doing all the things and checking all the boxes, moving up into the pocket, sure, sure. keeping his eyes downfield, and using his legs as a runner to be able to run and get first downs in a big-time moment in a big-time matchup. So maybe it's recency bias. But that Georgia game is probably the most NFL type of defense that he played his entire yeah, college Yeah, they're like career. always seven, dude. They're national champs. Um, and, you know, here, and recency bias is has a negative connotation to it. Is we, and if you could spin that and take it from another angle, is this just the fact that he peaked at the right time? Is he peaked at the time that's going to help his draft stock the most? You know, his name is surging as Bryce Young's name was at the top in the pinnacle for all throughout. And then now people are, we haven't seen him play in a minute. Alabama didn't go to the final, to the national championship. So he's gotten a little distant in our minds. And guess what's become more important is height, height. You're like, oh, he's so small. He's so small. You know, it's too small. So like the tape that was overriding that, now has faded while Stroud's tape towards the end of the season, you know, fanned the flames of his stock. And he's going to surge into the number one quarterback right now. And I don't think it's even close at this point, particularly. You guys asked me what I want to do. I think trading up to one from where at when the teams are ahead of, I just think it's going to be so much. Yeah, and you bet. I mean, he better be that's like jo a Joe Burrow, right? That's like, I mean, that's the type of player I need is a guy like I know is gonna just like I feel like Joe Burrow is just gonna as long as he don't get hurt, which he's already been hurt once actually. It's like as long as those those guys are gonna deal him, Mahomes, but I don't know. I mean, so much risk with it. My personal yeah. thought is, you guys are gonna hate it. Bridge quarterback. Blech. One year, I know, and Hendon Hooker in the second. Why even spend the second round pick if you're going okay. to get a bridge? If you're going to get a bridge, go with Matt Corral as your number two. There's no reason to not have him there. No, Hendon Hooker. No what I'm just to... saying is this: you no, just don't make Hendon Hooker. Hooker start. No, is that the idea? Is that that guy just doesn't make it, so Hendon Hooker doesn't have to start. You're just knowing this is Hendon Hooker would have been in this conversation if he wouldn't have gotten hurt. So you just oh, getting yeah. a 
it's just that this is that are you willing to risk you don't have to trade at all and you still get them and he could be just as good as stroud like as when it comes to like how the talent level and the yeah, only the only red my, flag to some people is that he's 25 he's my qb3 uh, i've got uh cj stroud bryce young and then Hendon Hooker, I have him above AR and uh, Will Levis. And I about really this? like Anthony Let me Richardson, ask you this too. And, yeah, yeah, man, but I think people are a little uh, – that's the pro, – they're all projects in their own right. And some. And, and let me ask you it this way, and then we're going to go to the next topic because and then we got to get back into some calls too. Um, what's more of a risk to you? And I want the callers to weigh in on this. I want you in the chat to weigh in on this. Trading three first round picks and getting Stroud, right? Is that more of a risk or, and, and is the reward alluring enough or is more of a risk taking Hendon Hooker in the second, trying to get a Jacoby Brissett for one year and letting maybe Matt Corral even beat him out this, you know what I'm saying? Like, What's the bigger risk, and is the reward that much different? I mean, no, but I mean, I'm a big fan of Matt Corral, and I understand people aren't going to love this, but I, I absolutely think that Matt Corral is comparable from a physical talent perspective and a leadership perspective to all the quarterbacks in this draft. I really do, but I understand the argument that you're not going to bet your – and, and, and I understand the argument that you're not going to bet your future on, you know, a third round quarterback that these coaches didn't even hire or that sure. they, they, they didn't even draft. Uh, so, you know, I, I understand the, the urgency, but I put this on Twitter, too. If the Bears know that the Panthers are desperate for a quarterback, they're going to drive up the price. And I'm sorry, I see people like Zach. Well, they Cole, also know that like, Houston wants one, too. It's not even yeah. the Bears knowing we're thirsty. That's not the point, Cody. Everybody knows every QB t t needy team is thirsty. The problem is this, is that if it gets into a bidding war, right? if you get lose. into a bidding war, the other people's picks, they have more ammunition. Are more desirable. They're, they're higher up. And yeah, I mean, so that's what I'm saying, man. And I see people coming at me in the chat. Oh, it's a poverty mindset. We have to do what, whatever it takes. I'm sorry. I'm not jumping on the bandwagon of literally whatever the Bears want for the first pick. The Panthers need to jump up and down and make it happen. Like, I'm just, I don't know, But they I don't just know, have man. to give more than every other team. That's it. They don't have to jump up and down to make the Bears. A lot. That's going to yeah. be a lot. It's a gun to, in, in your mind, is there any way? And yeah, you already said earlier, it's probably going to be three first round. That's what I think yeah. it has to be. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't see another world in which that isn't the scenario. Now, people are also saying, well, you would then have your, for what you lost in the draft, you would be able to make up with free agency. If you have your old line, you have your quarterback, Maybe you could convince some other guys to come. You don't here. got $70 million to spend, though. You don't even have that much. Uh, I mean, unless uh, unless they can do some. Uh, I mean, I think it's next voodoo. year. They're saying now it's going to take a whole nother year to get past this right now to where, like, yeah. we're, I mean, I, so I don't know if there is a super cap voodoo that we can do. Right now, the Chicago Bears, a lot of these teams have so much cap money, too. So they're going to be out there spinning in free agency. You know, yeah. so you can't get in two bidding wars. But that, that's what I'm saying, Imagine dude. That. So that, and look, I'm going to be very real with a lot of y'all in Panther Nation. Y'all are acting like some thirsty thoughts, okay? Everybody is so thirsty for a quarterback that most have adopted the mindset, whatever it takes to go get C.J. Stroud, go up and get him. And, dude, I like C.J. Stroud. I just spent the past 10 minutes telling you all the things that I like about him. But if yeah, you're going to tell just... me that if you're going to tell me that he's worth giving up three first round picks and potentially ruining our draft for the next three years, I'm sorry. That's a hard sell for me. I don't man. know. You gotta, I think of it as this is who does the player that he compares to 
and ceiling and talent. Not a style of play, but think of some names like here. Let's use. Can I, can, uh, how about this? Can I give you a high end and a low end comparison? So, okay, okay this is a high end, low end. High end, you're hoping that is Joe Burrow. That high end, that's what you're hoping from CJ Stroud. Low end, maybe a Jared Goff. And Derek Goff had a damn good year this year for yeah. the Lions. But, you know, that type of player. They're going to put the ball in the air. They're not very mobile. You're not going to ask them to do a whole lot. But, you know, in that kind of mold. You almost wonder, like, I want you guys in the chat to make a list of players that were worth three first-round picks as a quarterback. Like, I think you would put Luck in there. And even though, and and the irony of that is that he didn't he, he retired before everybody, but like thinking back on even the best quarterbacks, the best prospects, sometimes they haven't yielded. Not sometimes they don't yield as much as you think. Like, um, I mean, is that yeah? I mean, you're going to point to Joe Burrow. Maybe you could say he's worth three first round picks. You could say like an Andrew Luck. You could say Patrick Mahomes. Now that you know what you know. Um, uh, you could say maybe Trevor Lawrence, I get not maybe, I know you guys say that because he's been, he was like the most accomplished player in the history of the world or one of them. So I, I would accept his name in that I'm trying to think of another name right off the bat. That would just be, think about it in any scenario worth three first round picks. Like yeah. another quarterback, like that that we know. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, you can go back as far as you want to go back. Herbert, I said probably would have been worth three first round. Pick. That's crazy. But Justin you know what? Herbert, we could have just given one and gotten him. We only had to move up two spots. It hurts my soul that Justin yeah. Herbert okay. is not a. Panther. Let's. Uh, I want you guys to in the chat call in at two five two 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 eight fifty ninety eight. Tell us a quarterback that was is actually worth three first round picks 